Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I hope you were able to join us this morning for the hazardous waste rules, what's coming down the line. My name is Tammy McConnell, and I'm with the Division of Environmental Response and Revitalization here at Ohio EPA, and will be moderating today's webinar. This afternoon's webinar, a deeper dive into the universal waste and used oil rules, is part of Ohio EPA's first ever virtual compliance assistance conference. These webinars are occurring over a three week period from September 21 through October 8. Please visit our conference webpage for more information about sessions you might have missed and to register for our upcoming sessions. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items to help you participate in today's event. On this slide, you will see a screenshot of an example of the attendance of the attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your computer desktop in the upper right hand corner. For this webinar, you are using your uh, computer audio. If you are having sound issues, you will need to refresh your browser. If that doesn't work, log off and log back in. And if that doesn't work, please check your computer audio settings. Please feel free to submit questions by typing them into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send your questions in at any time during this presentation. We will be answering them as we go through the presentation, as well as addressing some during the Q&A session of the presentation. If we, need, if we do not have time to answer your questions, the presenter will reach out to you via email and assist you with your question. <clears throat> Today's webinar is being recorded and the presentation is available in the handout section of your attendee interface. Once the webinar is edited, you will receive a link to the recording in a follow-up email, along with a session survey and a certificate of attendance. The session survey will also appear once the session is over. We would greatly appreciate it if you could take the time to complete the survey to let us know how we are doing and how we can further assist you. This session is approved for one hour of registered sanitarian and sanitarian in training credit. If you did not submit your RS, SIT, or SIT number in the CEU ID number box when registering, please make sure you provide us with your number through the Q&A feature. The session is also approved for one VAP Certified Professional Development Hour Unit credit. Submit your session attendance certificate with your Certified Professional Renewal application to Ohio EPA's VAP Certified Professional Program. The session is also approved for one BMP hours towards annual education requirements for CNDD certified operators. Please submit your session attendance certificate with your certified operator application or renewal form to Ohio EPA CNDD operator certification program. Attendees seeking American Planning Association credit may do so through APA's self-reporting option. Log into your My APA account and select the self-reported credits option to receive credit. If you are seeking other CEUs, please refer to our agenda available on the conference landing page at epa.ohio.gov slash compliance underscore conference or visit Ohio EPA's website webpage at epa.ohio.gov and click on the 2020 Virtual Compliance Assistance Conference scrolling banner at the top of the page. As I mentioned, I will be the moderator for, for this session. We also have Tammy Heffelfinger, Supervisor of the Hazardous Waste Compliance and Assurance Section in the Division of Environmental Response and Revitalization as the subject matter expert. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our speaker, Zach Cablin, 
from the Ohio EPA's Division of Environmental Response and Revitalization. Zach. Thank you, Tammy. Um, as Tammy said, my name is Zach Cablin, and I am with the Hazardous Waste Compliance Insurance Section at Ohio EPA. And I am going to talk to you today about universal waste, um, the Ohio specific universal waste, and then a little bit about used oil. So our learning objectives for today are, what are the universal waste rules? How does a hazardous waste become a universal waste? What are the Ohio specific universal wastes? What are the management standards for universal waste? What can and can't a handler do? And then we'll have a brief recap at the end about used oil. So the universal waste rules are intended to promote recycling as well as proper disposal by easing certain regulatory requirements, such as waste evaluation and manifesting. When managing these wastes under the universal waste rules, a generator does not need to evaluate them, and they are not counted when determining the quantity of hazardous waste generated for the purposes of determining the generator status. Currently, Ohio has four categories of universal waste recognized nationwide, and three additional types that are Ohio-specific universal waste that may be managed under these reduced requirements. Lamps, suspended or recalled pesticides, mercury-contained devices, and batteries are recognized nationwide. Antifreeze, aerosol containers, and paint and paint-related waste are the Ohio-specific universal wastes. Universal wastes are specific hazardous waste streams that a janitor can choose to manage in an alternative manner in place of the more complex hazardous waste. A waste must be a hazardous waste before it can be a universal waste. If a hazardous waste stream is not managed as a universal waste, then the waste must be managed as a hazardous waste under the applicable hazardous waste regulations. These wastes are generated by numerous businesses. They're typically in medium to large volumes. They exhibit low level hazards and they must be easily managed. There are four types of universal waste recognized nationwide, which are as follows. First being discarded batteries, and this category includes hazardous waste batteries such as nickel cadmium batteries and spent lead acid batteries. There's also hazardous waste pesticides, and this category includes hazardous waste pesticides that are either suspended and or recalled under Section 6 of the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rhododendicide Act. They can be suspended or canceled as part of a voluntary recall by the registrant or collected in waste pesticide programs. Next, we have mercury-containing devices. And a device or part of a, of a device excluding batteries and lamps that contains elemental mercury integral to its function is a mercury-containing device. Some common, commonly recognized devices are thermostats, barometers, temperature and pressure gauges, and mercury switches, such as light switches in automobiles. And last, we have light bulbs. Um, this category includes hazardous waste lamps that meet the definition in OAC rule 3745510A, and lamps can exhibit the toxicity characteristic for some heavy metals, such as mercury, lead, or cadmium. Examples of universal waste lamps include incandescent fluorescent bulbs, high-intensity discharge bulbs, uh, mercury vapor, high-pressure sodium, and metal halide lamps. On December 21st, 2017, Ohio EPA added three new types of universal waste to our existing universal waste rules. And these include antifreeze, non-empty containers, and paint and paint-related wastes. There are three categories that a facility or a person handling universal waste can fall under. Two transports will depend on what a universal waste handler is defined as a generator of universal waste and the owner or operator of a facility, including all contiguous property that receives universal waste from other universal waste handlers, accumulates universal waste, and sends universal waste to another universal waste handler, to a destination facility, or to a foreign destination. A universal waste handler does not mean a person who treats, disposes of, or recycles universal waste, 
or a person engaged in the offsite transportation of universal waste by air, rail, highway, or water, including a universal waste transfer facility. Universal waste handlers can include persons who generate universal waste and persons who receive and store universal waste generated by someone else. Under Ohio's hazardous waste rules, a person who receives and stores hazardous waste from others is required to have a storage permit. The universal waste rules allow these persons to accept and store universal waste from off-site without having to obtain a storage permit. So in effect, simple storage without waste manipulation does not require a permit. Generators of universal waste who want to take advantage of the universal waste rules instead of the hazardous waste generator requirements must comply with all universal waste handler requirements. Universal waste handlers are classified as small or large universal waste handlers based on the quantity of universal waste accumulated at any time. And generators and others receiving and storing universal waste fall under the two categories. First is small quantity handlers who accumulate less than 5,000 kilograms of universal waste at any time. Or there are large quantity handlers that accumulate more than 5,000 kilograms of universal waste at any time. If a small quantity universal waste handler accumulates more than 5,000 kilograms of universal waste on site at any time, they must comply with a large quantity universal waste handler requirements for the remainder of the calendar year. All generators have the option of handling their universal waste under the universal waste rules or under Ohio's generator requirements found in OAC 3745-52. If a facility is both a universal waste handler and a very small quantity generator of hazardous waste, which means that they generate 100 kilograms or less per month of a hazardous waste, or one kilogram or less per month of an acutely hazardous waste, that handler may take advantage of a few options for the management of their universal waste. If the universal waste and hazardous waste generated is less than 100 kilograms per month, they can manage all waste as hazardous waste in order to take advantage of the requirements for very small quantity generators of hazardous waste. If the universal waste and hazardous waste generated is greater than 100 kilograms per month, they can manage the universal waste and hazardous waste separately in order to take advantage of the requirements for the universal waste. So a destination facility is defined as a facility that The general advantages of, of a generator using the universal waste rules are that universal waste should not be counted when making quantity determinations for hazardous waste. Universal waste handler status levels should not be confused with the hazardous waste generator status levels. Uh, Whatever generator status you are uh, for hazardous waste has nothing to do with um, the status that you are with universal waste. They're, they're two different things. Um, waste evaluation of universal waste is not required. And hazardous waste manifests are not required for universal waste, but a large quantity handler of universal waste shall keep record of each shipment of universal waste received at the facility. A hazardous waste transporter is not required for the transportation of universal waste. Some common components of the universal waste rules are the container for each type of universal waste must meet the following criteria. The container remains closed. The container is structurally sound. The container is compatible with the universal waste. The container lacks evidence of leaks, spillage, or damage that could cause leakage. Small and large quantity universal waste handlers may store their universal waste on site for up to one year from the time it was generated. If accumulation for greater than one year is required, the handler must be able to prove that the accumulation is necessary in order to facilitate, facilitate proper recovery, treatment, or disposal. A large quantity handler of universal waste shall ensure that all employees are thoroughly familiar with proper waste handling and emergency procedures relative to their responsibilities during normal facility operations and emergencies. 
A handler of universal waste must immediately contain all releases of universal waste and other residues from universal waste. They must also determine whether any material resulting from the release is hazardous waste, and if so, must manage the hazardous waste in compliance with all applicable requirements. Universal waste can be self transported by the handler of the waste or it can be transported by a third party. The person transporting the waste must comply with the transportation standards. A universal waste transporter is prohibited from transporting the universal waste to a place other than a universal waste handler, a destination facility, or a foreign destination. The universal waste being shipped off-site meets the Department of Transportation's definition of hazardous material under 49 CFR 171.8. The shipment must be properly described on a shipping paper in accordance with the applicable Department of Transportation regulations. Okay, the next slide. Universal waste general standards. Small quantity handlers of universal waste and universal waste transporters are not required to notify Ohio EPA of their universal waste activities and are not required to obtain an EPA hazardous waste ID number. However, large quantity universal waste handlers must notify Ohio EPA in writing and obtain an EPA hazardous waste ID number prior to exceeding the 5,000 kilogram storage limit. A large, quantity hand, a large quantity universal waste handler who previously notified Ohio EPA of their hazardous waste activities and received an EPA ID number is not required to re-notify. Additionally, small and large quantity universal waste handlers and transporters are not required to have a hazardous waste installation and operation permit, provided they comply with all applicable universal waste rules. Destination facilities are required to have a hazardous waste installation and operation permit for storage of the material of the material prior to recycling. The recycling process itself is not subject to Ohio's hazardous waste regulations. A facility that collects and stores universal waste and sends them to a recycler, such as a broker, would not require a permit to operate since the activity is regulated as a handler of universal waste. Okay, the next slide is universal waste general standards continued. A small quantity handler of universal waste is not required to keep records of shipments of universal waste. For a large quantity handler of universal waste, the handler shall keep a record of each shipment of universal waste received or shipped at the facility. The record may take the form of a log, an invoice, manifest, bill of lading, or other shipping document. The record for each shipment of universal waste received shall include all of the following information. The name and address of the originating universal waste handler of foreign or foreign shipper from whom the universal waste was sent the quantity of each type of universal waste received, batteries, pesticides, mercury-containing equipment, lamps, aerosol containers, antifreeze, etc., and the date of receipt of the shipment of universal waste. As part of the record retention, a large quantity handler of universal waste shall retain the records described above for at least three years after the date of receipt of a shipment of universal waste or the date of shipment left, uh, left the facility. Okay, transporters of universal waste. <clears throat> universal waste transporters may transport universal waste from one universal waste handler to another, to universal waste destination facilities or to foreign destinations. A universal waste transporter is prohibited from disposing, diluting, or treating universal waste except when responding to a release. A universal waste transporter must respond to releases of universal waste during transit. 
Universal Waste Handlers may act as their own transporter as long as they comply with the Universal Waste Transporter requirements. Universal Waste Transporters may store Universal Waste during normal course of transportation at a Universal Waste Transfer Facility, includes loading trucks, parking areas, storage areas, and other similar areas where shipments of Universal Waste are held for 10 days or less. If a universal waste transporter stores universal waste for more than 10 days, the transporter becomes a, a universal waste handler and must comply with all applicable requirements of the universal waste rules. Okay, this comes to our first poll question. Which of the items below can be managed as a universal waste? Fluorescent bulbs? lithium ion batteries, empty used aerosol cans, used oil, or all of the above. All right, the polls are open. So once that pops up there, if you wanna make your choice. Okay, we'll be closing the polls here in a few seconds if you want to make your choice. And please remember that uh, when you're making, when you're doing the polls, we don't know what your answers are. So have fun with this and answer. And if you're wrong, that's fine, but um, you may surprise yourself. Okay, polls have closed and with 74% voted, 86% said all of the above. Very good. All right. <clears throat> this one says select. Oh, I am so sorry. It said select all that apply. And used oil is actually managed as used oil and not under the universal waste um, rules. All right. Now we're on to individual Ohio specific waste. These three waste streams may be managed as a universal waste within the state of Ohio. However, other states may not have designated these wastes as a universal waste. If you send an Ohio specific universal waste to or through another state, you must comply with the state's requirements for the transportation and management of the waste. So let's talk about aerosol containers. Oh, just the containers. <laughs> okay, Ohio specific standards, both small and large quantity handlers of universal waste shall manage the universal waste in a way that prevents releases of any universal waste to the environment using containers or tanks that are structurally sound and compatible with the universal waste. A container that does not comply shall be overpacked or taken out of service. Handlers must stop, contain, clean up, and properly manage any release of universal waste. The handler shall keep the container closed except when adding or removing universal waste. Each container shall be labeled with words that identify the contents of the container. However, there is no specific wording required for these three wastes. All right, now let's talk about antifreeze. Antifreeze is a handler of universal waste shall manage universal waste antifreeze in a way that prevents releases of any universal waste or any component of universal waste to the environment as follows. As with all universal waste handlers, both small and large quantity handlers shall manage the universal waste antifreeze using containers or tanks that are structurally sound and compatible with the antifreeze. A container or tank that is not structurally sound or compatible with the antifreeze shall be overpacked or taken out of service. The, ha the handler shall keep the container closed 
except when adding or removing antifreeze. If storage antifreeze is in a tank, if storing antifreeze in a tank, sorry about that, the tank shall comply with paragraphs B to H of rule 374566-101. A handler shall not commingle or contaminate antifreeze subsequent to the removal of antifreeze from a heat exchanger or other equipment when used to winterize that equipment. And number six. Oh. A handler of universal waste. Um, shall develop and maintain at the facility a procedure that describes how antifreeze will be prevented from being commingled or contaminated subsequent to removal. And a handler shall use dedicated antifreeze collection and storage containers and tanks for the management of antifreeze. Okay, the next slide. Antifreeze mixed with used oil after generation does not qualify as a universal waste. The mixture is regulated as a used oil. A handler or destination facility that processes this used oil must notify Ohio EPA and comply with the used oil processor regulations. A handler of universal waste may reclaim antifreeze provided they use commercially available equipment or equipment specifically custom designed or retrofitted to reclaim the antifreeze and the handler's reclamation equipment has sufficient processing capacity to reclaim the quantity of antifreeze received or generated by the handler within one year. The handler shall train each operator of the reclamation equipment regarding the proper operation and maintenance of the reclamation equipment. Any waste generated from the reclamation of the antifreeze is a newly generated waste and the handler must evaluate this waste to determine if it is a hazardous, if it is, yeah, if it is hazardous, sorry. Okay, spills of universal waste antifreeze that are recovered as liquid may be managed as universal antifreeze, universal waste antifreeze. Spills cleaned up with an absorbent need to be evaluated to determine if it is hazardous waste. Upon detection of a release of universal waste handler must stop the release, contain the released antifreeze, and clean up and properly manage and dispose of the released antifreeze. Okay. Each container or tank accumulating antifreeze shall be labeled with the words that identify the contents of the container or tank. There's, these are examples used antifreeze, spin antifreeze, used uh, universal waste antifreeze. But remember, there is no specific wording you have to use um, with these three uh, Ohio specific ones. Okay, paint and paint related waste. This category includes hazardous waste paints that meet the definition in OAC rule 3745-273-09. Paint is defined as a pigmented or unpigmented powder coating or a pigmented or unpigmented mixture of binder and suitable liquid resulting from commercial, industrial, mining, agricultural, and post-consumer activities that upon drying forms an adhering coating on the surface that the paint is applied. Powder coating is a surface coating that is applied as a dry powder and is fused into a continuous coating film using heat. Paint related waste means a material contaminated with paint that results from the packaging of paint, wholesale, 
and retail operations, paint manufacturing, and paint application or removal activities, or a material derived from the reclamation of paint-related waste that is recycled in a manner other than burning for recover, uh, energy recovery or used in a manner constituting disposal. The waste codes typically associated with this waste stream could include ignitability, heavy metals, characteristics, and listed solvents. Handlers may puncture, shred, or crush paint containers of five gallons or less using commercially available equipment or equipment specifically custom designed or retrofitted to reclaim the universal waste paint or paint related waste. The handler shall train each operator of the reclamation equipment regarding the proper operation and maintenance of the reclamation equipment. The collected paint can still be classified as universal waste and may be stored in containers or tanks. Any universal waste handler may reclaim universal waste paint, but universal waste paint related waste may only be reclaimed by the generator of the waste or the destination facility, AKA a permitted hazardous waste facility. Any waste generated from the reclamation is a newly generated waste and needs to be evaluated to determine if it is, if it is hazardous. If a listed solvent is used to paint cleaning, in, in paint cleaning, the waste generated from the distillation of the waste will carry the listing. Spills of universal waste paints or paint related waste will need to be evaluated to determine if it is hazardous waste. The reclamation equipment must have sufficient processing capacity to reclaim the quantity of universal waste paint received or generated by the handler within one year. The handler shall train each operator of the reclamation equipment regarding the proper operation and maintenance of the reclamation equipment. Both small and large quantity handlers of universal waste shall manage the waste using containers or tanks. The tanks of small quantity handler universal waste must comply with the requirements found in paragraphs B to H of the rule 3745 dash 66 dash 101. Aerosol container means a non-opening, non-refillable container that holds a substance under pressure that can release the substance as a spray, gel, or foam by means of a propellant gas. The waste codes typically associated with this waste would be ignitable and numerous listed commercial chemical products depending on the product in the container. A handler who generates the universal waste aerosol containers can collect these containers at a universal waste satellite accumulation area Consisting, consisting of a container or unit having a capacity not to exceed 55 gallons or a cabinet. The aerosol containers must be moved to the main universal waste storage or puncturing area when it is full, where it may be accumulated for up to one year. This is the only type of universal waste where a satellite accumulation container may be used. Both small and large quantity handlers of universal waste shall manage the universal waste aerosol containers using containers, a cabinet, or other unit in which the aerosol containers are accumulated. A handler shall immediately empty a leaking aerosol container of the con containers con contents or shall individually 
overpack the leaking aerosol container in a container having enough absorbent material to absorb the leaking contents of the aerosol container. Oh, that's a lot of containers. A handler of universal waste may puncture or crush an aerosol container to remove and collect the contents of the aerosol container, rendering the container empty. They will need to use appropriately designed equipment to do so that has sufficient processing capacity. The puncturing of aerosol containers must be done in a ventilated area and protected from an, ign an ignition source. The handler must train operators regarding the proper operation and maintenance of the equipment used to remove the contents of the aerosol containers. The collected material is not classified as a universal waste and will and will need to be evaluated to determine if it is hazardous waste. An exception is paint removed from an aerosol container, not commingled with other waste, may be managed as a universal waste paint. Some aerosol containers you may want to send to another handler who is more familiar with these types of waste. Insecticides, expanding foam, adhesives, pepper spray. When managing these Ohio-specific universal waste, while in Ohio, the waste is considered a universal waste as long as they are managed in accordance with the rule. Upon entering another state, however, the waste must be classified per the receiving state's rules. And here are some resources. You can go to our Universal Waste webpage or the Universal Waste Handler Requirements uh, table. Um, the webpage will also include the table, but it has a lot of different um, documents and guidance documents and fact sheets that uh, will help you if you have any questions. And another poll question. What is the weather like where you are listening? The polls are up. So once you see it, if you want to let us know how the weather is in your area. I know here it's cloudy and dreary. Okay, it's looking like people are voting. So get a couple more votes in and we'll be closing the polls. All right. It looks as if everybody's in the same situation I am. Looks like it's cloudy out there for most of you. A few of you got some sun, yay. Okay. Um, used oil requirements. The used oil rules are separate from the hazardous waste rules and only address used oil. The rules are based on the premise that used oil will be recycled. So what is used oil? Used oil is a petroleum-based or synthetic oils that are used and contaminated with physical and chemical impurities are defined as used oil. To determine whether your material meets the definition of used oil, you must determine if it meets the following three criteria. The origin. The material must come from either refined crude oil or from synthetic materials, including materials derived from coal, shale, or polymer-based starting material. Um, 
example, Mobile One, Castrol, uh, Syntec, and water-based cutting and hydraulic oils. Two, the use. The material must be used as a lubricant, hydraulic fluid, heat transfer fluid or coolant, cutting fluid, buoyant, or for some other similar purpose. Materials that have not been used, such as bottoms from a virgin oil tank, clean out, or a virgin oil spill, are not considered used oil. Other materials that are not considered used oil include petroleum products used for cleaning solvents and other petroleum-derived products, such as antifreeze and kerosene. Contaminants. The material must be contaminated with either physical or chemical impurities from its use. Examples of contaminants could include dirt, metal shavings, solvents, or halogens. Used oil includes engine oils, lubricating oils, hydraulic fluids, and industrial process oils. Additionally, used oil is any oil, synthetic or refined, that has been contained in various items, and these items would be regulated as used oil until materials containing or otherwise contaminated with used oil, from which the used oil has been properly drained or removed to the extent possible, such as no visible signs of free flowing oil remain in or on the material. Examples include oil filters, absorbent materials, shocks or struts, transmissions, and engines. Once the used oil is drained from these items, they are no longer regulated by the used oil rules. Used oil does not include unused oils, cleanup materials from virgin oil spills, animal or vegetable oils, oil sludge from virgin oil storage tanks, antifreeze, kerosene, unless used as a lubricant, and petroleum products, distillates used as solvents. So how should I manage my used oil on site? Ohio's regulations include some specific requirements for used oil generators. Most of these regulations relate to good housekeeping practices. You must label containers or tanks of used oil with the words used oil. Must store used oil in containers or tanks that are in good condition, not rusting, not leaking, etc. If there is a leak of used oil, stop the leak, contain it, clean it up, and properly manage the cleanup materials. You must use a transporter with an EPA identification number when shipping used oil off site. Used oils must not be mixed with other wastes such as mineral spirits, brake cleaner, fluid, or washer solvents unless you are sure that you are complying with the appropriate regulations. Okay, so how should I recycle my used oil? Used oil may be recycled using several options. You can burn your used oil in a space heater. You can burn used oil generated at your business or your used oil received from a householder do-it-yourselfer in an on-site space heater. To do this, your space heater cannot burn used oil at a rate exceeding 0.5 million BTU per hour, and all combustion gases from your space heater must be vented to the outside. Please note though, that besides complying with the used oil regulations, you may also be subject to the regulations by Ohio EPA's Division of Air Pollution Control. You can send your oil to a recycler. 
The best way to manage your used oil is to send it to a used oil recycler. Ohio EPA maintains a list of companies that recycle used oil. Used oil recyclers conduct various recycling methods. You can take your used oil to a collection center. You can transport small amounts of used oil generated at your site to a registered used oil collection center without being subject to the used oil transporter requirements. To do, ah, sorry, to do this, you must use your own vehicle or the vehicle must be owned by an employee. Neither vehicle may transport more than 55 gallons of used oil at a time. Or you can take your used oil to a used, to a used oil aggregation point. You can transport small amounts of used oil that you generate to aggregation points that you own. A used oil aggregation point is a site or facility that you own in which you transport used oil to. You can transport your used oil to your aggregation points without being subject to the used oil transporter requirements. If you use your own vehicle or a vehicle owned by an employee and you transport no more than 55 gallons at a time. A transporter of used oil. A used oil transporter is any person that does any of the following. Transports used oil, collects used oil from more than one used oil generator and transports the used oil. Collects and transports absorbents contaminated with used oil or operates or owns a used oil transfer facility conduct incidental treatment. Balking individual containers of used oil, draining used oil from oil filters, or separating used oil from absorbent material. A used oil transporter may transport used oil to another transporter. They may, <clears throat> sorry, they may transport to a processor or a re-refining facility to an off-specification used oil burner or an on-specification used oil burner. They may act as a transfer facility if storing for under 35 days, and they can self-transport up to 55 gallons of used oil. How are used oils regulated that are sent off-site for disposal? Used oil that are contaminated may no longer be regulated as used oil. It would be classified as a spent material. This waste must be evaluated to, to determine if it is or is not a hazardous waste, and if so, be managed as a hazardous waste. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're ready for some questions. Here is a phone number for our Hazardous Waste uh, Compliance and Insurance Support Unit. If you have questions after, after the um, presentation, but I think uh, we're out of time actually. So, uh, I do apologize for the um, technical difficulties that we had earlier and uh, we will answer all of your questions. Uh, they will get answered. You'll be receiving an email if you ask any questions. And again, like I said, I apologize. Um, thank you everyone for attending today's webinar, a deeper dive into the universal waste and used oil rules. If you have any additional questions, please contact Zach directly, or you can uh, call the number that we provided. As I mentioned earlier, once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation. We would appreciate if you would complete that to provide us your feedback. You will also receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link to view the recording of today's webinar, a certificate of attendance, and another link to the survey in case you do not get a chance to complete it now. And let me see. There we go. Um, 
Thank you again for the joining today's webinar. We hope you are able to participate in more of Ohio EPA's Virtual Compliance Assistance Conference. And hopefully we don't have any more uh, technical issues, but no promises that <laughs> working from home is a challenge. Um, tomorrow, Wednesday, September 30th, we do have from 10 to 11 U.S. EPA updates with Region 5 Director Michael Harris. And from two to three, Encouraging Environmental Excellence Award Ceremony. We hope that you can um, participate in both of those or one of those. And we have more next week. So uh, everybody have a good day. And again, apologies for the technical issues. Um, your questions will get answered. Thank you very much.